when Bukaj started this set of work, she started at a much smaller scale and really fell in love with paint and with painting. And we see that as the viewer, that love of the media comes through at this scale. She has that ability to fully express that dimension of the world of the figure, which is incredibly impressive. What struck me first when I walked into the gallery was just the invitation. The large-scale paintings are bright and embracing, and they just make you feel welcome. One of the things that really impressed me when I first walked through the space is the way that it moves with me, the way that the exhibition itself actually changes as my body moves through the space. Um, these sculptural objects that emerge from the floor actually change color depending on the perspective of the viewer. So here I can see uh, there's kind of an echo of the background of the works that are in my eyesight. It embraces me. It allows me to become a part of the world of the figures. And it strikes me that the scale is incredibly intentional to the works. When I see these large scale works, they move with my body. They allow me entry. They're generous in that way to me as a viewer. What strikes me so much about the way that the paint works itself is that I see every stroke. We see these kind of sharper lines that happen in the brightness of the faces, and that allows for my eye to spend a lot of time just in the movement of the work itself. My eye continues to move around until I'm sort of at that respite in the center, the brightness of that face. And it's a face out of time. It doesn't depict any kind of accuracy in its subject, but rather I get a sense of a generic subject that could be anyone, that could be me, that could be anyone that I meet on the street, that sort of timeless quality of the materials that they're wearing, the space that they're in, just feeling like it defies a sense of place. And yet, in a lot of ways, it's uniquely Californian. We see the pieces on the floor, of course, have that same kind of gesture of the, of the greens and the yellows. Bukaj actually is only using six different color shades in these pieces and blending them in different ways to create the, the density and the texture of the, of the paint palette. Um, but actually each of these pieces on the floor is named for a kind of California grass, natural grass, as well as different cloud formations. So we can really see that kind of Californian environment here. What really strikes me about these paintings is the kind of generosity and sincerity. They're imperfect and Bukaj truly loves people. She is so interested in people. She'll sit and just watch people and is interested in them in a way that is hopeful, in a way that embraces their humanity. It's not that kind of Greco-Roman sense of uh, perfection, human perfection that she's interested in. It's really in the imperfection that makes us human. So you see the sort of playing with proportion that happens in these works. The proportion is imperfect. The facial structures are imperfect. Bukaj is someone that was actually trained in this sort of gestural technique from a very young age, actually at a time when it wasn't even nouveau or popular uh, as a 13-year-old living in Quebec. But she also did an incredible amount of work studying anatomical drawing. So she can draw that perfect proportionate figure and instead embraces the kind of imperfection that allows us to feel ourselves in these pieces, to connect with the figures in a different way. 
that imperfection actually allows for the humanity to shine through and that joyousness, that love of play and of a kind of authentic humanity and sincerity is so much about who this painter is and it's so easy to read in these pieces. Over the last several years, uh, Bukaj has actually been assembling these incredible lookbooks and they bring together different art historical images, popular culture images, scenes from movies as well as from her own life in Venice, California and her family and finding those commonalities between the different ways that, and especially in this set of works, that adolescence is expressed. So she's particularly interested in adolescence as this time where we come into a kind of recognition of our own adulthood, of our, our own identity, separate and apart from that of our family. And living in Southern California, that sense of cross-cultural contamination, intermixing that happens when one raises children actually in a different cultural context that than they themselves grew up. So this piece here is actually a self-portrait of Bukaj at 13, if she had been cool, inspired in some ways by watching her own child and, and her uh, peers' children grow, grow up in California, in this place of ultimate cool, Venice, California, that kind of quintessential California cool, American coolness, and thinking back and reflecting on her Quebecois family and what it was like to grow up in that moment and to recognize the fallibility of your own family, your own parents that we see as children as being so perfect and infallible, and then to recognize the ways that we need to forge our own path and the sense of coolness actually not being necessarily an aloofness, but being a coming into one's own, being an embrace of one's individuality. So I love this piece and the way that it kind of reflects that sense of self outside of cultural context, outside of family context, that hope of being able to find oneself even in the midst of all that noise. The scale wasn't easy, so Bukaj actually typically works in a much smaller scale with her paintings. And this series took quite a lot of experimentation to be able to, as she says, actually build up the confidence to approach a canvas at this scale. When she knew that the pieces had to be this scale, she actually started by working on a horizontal surface, doing watercolor on paper. And she loved the way that the watercolor entered the paper, but she wasn't getting exactly what she wanted in terms of the gestural qualities. And it wasn't until she moved back to a piece that she had made in 2008 that was a gestural drawing that looked very much like the painting of this bearded man over here. So she found this painting she had made in 2008, just as she was starting her MFA at Otis. And she noticed that quality of gesture in the background and foreground. And then she really wanted to find a way to utilize the paint in a way that reminded her where it was reminiscent of the way that watercolor really flows into the substrate. And she found this new technology, gesso, that allowed for that kind of, of immersion of the paint. So we see the gestures of the paint, and they don't blend into one another. We can see each movement of the brush is actually fully articulated, and yet also recedes into the background. She has that ability to layer the paint in such a way that only the pieces that she wants to come into the foreground are coming there. So this is a densely layered kind of painting technique. And the less layered uh, levels of paint we see kind of recede more into the background. So 
she has incredible control over the media here to be able to fully express that dimension of the world of the figure, um, which is incredibly impressive. And our eye is just drawn in again to that kind of movement of the paintbrush, of the, the environment, and it brings us back out again into these sculptural objects that are in the space. So we're constantly in motion and in flow.